Interesting night last night. The Bulls had a bit of a party. I really think it was the Algos. You hear a lot about uh, the Algos when the market goes down. The Bulls are mad. They're not mad when the market goes up and the Algos drive them up. And so there's these overnight parties with the Algos driving the markets up and down. And you see that last night on the China trade news. I think it's a bit overbought. This is what I mean when I say gap up. You see the day session data only here. And we're not looking at just a 24-hour session. This ends at 4.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This starts at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And there's a gap up. We'll look at the 24-hour session data in a minute. So this is what we mean by gap up. Big gap up. The market just ran up overnight um, on China. Um, we are back at the table now, which we've been at for 18 months. We, we were at the table for 18 months and nothing was accomplished. Uh, we stepped away from the table and it was bearish now that we're back at the table. Uh, the market is acting jubilant like the market, like there, there has been a deal done and we're going to so go to new highs and China, the China trade war is over and it's been resolved. And that's how I perceive it and I still think we're a long way away. I don't know all the information. I'm not an insider. And so maybe, maybe a deal gets done. Maybe it does go higher and maybe the information is in the market. But I don't think it is and it seems a little bit premature and... Uh, you know, beginning of the month and jubilance on this news has really pushed the markets high and our systems are long and so let's take a look at the strategies tick pull back as long it had several losers in a row it's up today taking this trade I want to show you some market divergences here as well here is the 24 hour data if, if you can see that this ends and then an hour later it opens so you see the overnight trades um, we had this spurt here and I thought that was just to take out, try to take out 27.50, and then it had another one here, and it did take out 27.50, and then the market um, looked like it was going to, um, you know, to kind of take profits or mean revert back down and resume the downtrend. But then you get the China trade news, boom, all the way up. The S&P pulled back right to 29.50, and so if we take a look at the S&Ps. Let's look at it on Night Trader. Night Trader did not take this trade. It had run too far too fast. Um, oftentimes when there's an important resistance level like 29.50, the market will, will work to take it out at night. And so that's what they did with the news. They pushed it way above 29.50. It pulled back to 29.50 and now it's pushed off of that. And so they're really trying, the real, the real goal probably going into to, uh, Friday is to support 29.50. Even though we're 28 points away with this kind of volatility, that's not very far. So that's the goal of the bulls. Uh, the algos did the driving up, and I think it's premature. And I'm not sure that this will hold. I wouldn't be surprised to see the market roll over or soar to new highs. Either way, we're trading it with our algos. And our algos are on the long side. Uh, Cobra 3 is long. Tick pullback ES. Tick pullback NQ is long. Um, tick count trend is long. Adaptive moving average is long. And so the one strategy that did capture this last night a little bit was the uh, breakout. I mean, the S&P breakout, it's long. Um, it was already long from the previous day. Hit the profit target overnight and uh, would have been nice to capture more of that move or catch that entry a little sooner. But this one is up on the day, going long on the ES at 2967.25. It's up 10 points currently. And so... Um, yeah, those are the trades on the day. Crazy, crazy, crazy price action in these stock indexes. The SR counter trends are kind of quiet. That's uh, these set of strategies over here. I want to highlight those strategies for you, and then I want to show you some market divergences. SR counter trends are these strategies on the workspace as well as these, and so those haven't signaled as many trades. So you're talking about 30 different algorithms in this uh, setup and you see uh, one, let's see, two, um, three, this is the breakout, four, five, six, six strategies are trading today. So six out of 30. So oftentimes you get, you know, two, three, four, ten at the most strategies at any given time taking a trade. Sometimes it can be more, but oftentimes it's not it's not super active where you're seeing all these algos just constantly firing signals um, all at the same time um, and are taking net positions all at the same time. So I wanted to let you know about that. Now I want to take a look at market divergences 
um, in the um, indexes let's take a look at the advanced decline line interesting that the advanced decline line um, it has these demarcation points here at 1,000. So you see, uh, let's get this to so 1,000, and then there's 1,500, and then there's 2,000, and then there's minus 1,000. And so you saw, see, two days ago it was down to minus 1,000. So sometimes it, it oscillates between these two. And so it'll be down at 1,000, and up, up at 1,000, and down at 1,000. But what's interesting, what's really interesting to note today is the fact that the advanced decline line is lower than it was yesterday. Here's yesterday's advanced decline line trading in this price range right here. And today it opened here and it's trending down. And because of that, I wouldn't be surprised to see the market reverse. Even though we're long, we can't factor in every single technical dynamic into these strategies. But this, I mean, oftentimes the, the indexes can lead the market and other times the market can lead the indexes. This could turn on a dime. I'm not going to make a trading decision based on this divergence, but it's something to note for your strategy development. And if it's something you want to factor in, uh, you can. But that is one factor that um, is interesting. And, and I, I don't have a strategy that takes in this into consideration for the entry or the exit right now. And so that's something to research and develop. Um, is looking at the advanced decline line is here and the next day it's significantly lower trending down while the market is trending up so you have a divergence because the market is up market and let's see uh, markets trending up advanced decline line is trending down and so that is the divergence that we are talking about one is going higher, the other one's going lower. They're going in different directions, they're diverging. And so that is the update. Those are my market observations for the day. Those are my trading systems. And Europe is closing here in about nine minutes. And that's always interesting to take a look at. You see the market depth indicators. Um, we haven't looked at those yet. Obviously, they're blue. And then the buying spree is kind of over. What I see, what I think is happening right now is the algos are done. They finished here. The algos finished driving prices up. And now the human traders are kind of taking over. Um, and the algos might jump back in and try to mean revert this to the short side while the human traders try to jump in. And and they're trying to buy a pullback. The human traders that, that trade only during the day, um, that they're going to try to buy pullbacks here. And I think the algos might try to take the other side of that. So it should be interesting interesting to watch uh, the rest of this trading day to see who wins that battle and to see where these market prices end up. I really don't know where it's going to end up. Uh, algos are long, but as you, can, as you know, the divergences are there. One more divergence real quick um, is the NYC tick. It's up here at plus 1,200 at the open today. Went down, went up, down, up, down, up. And so this too can also change on the dime. It could all of a sudden start ticking up, uh, but it's kind of bearish uh, since about 10:30. So 10:30 happened here on the on the stock indexes, and 10:30 happened here on the NYC tick. It's been down. Sometimes things change on the hour as well. And 11:30 is coming up in eight minutes, and we'll see. That could be the inflection point of the day, whether the market decides to go higher the rest of the day or completely reverses.